I'm not really a politics person. I'm more into pop culture, obviously. But lately, the lines between a bloodthirsty show about evil superheroes and wild US politics got kind of blurry. And that's, um... Diabolical! If you've never heard of The Boys, a quick heads up. The show is set in a world where superheroes exist, but they're not always the good guys. Imagine Superman wasn't raised by loving parents on a farm, but bred by sadistic scientists in a lab, and then managed by a ruthless PR firm. Kind of as if the Kardashians could fly and shoot lasers from their eyes. Get your fucking ass up and work. And sometimes innocent people um, accidentally get caught up in very gory consequences. At any other time, the boys would have been entertaining satire, and for a time, it was. The show has always been inspired by real life, like ridiculous Fox News hosts. Well, Ted and Janet Reardon, the parents of Luke Reardon, better known as Golden Boy, have all but barricaded themselves inside their home. Now, their attorney says they're simply in mourning. But then why are they hiding? Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson. Tonight, sometimes you wonder just how filthy and dishonest our news media are. The companies supporting the LGBTQ community purely for marketing reasons. And then... They say, I have the most loyal people. Did you ever see that? Where I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? It's like incredible. Ooh. But now, fiction and reality aren't that different anymore. It was never subtle that Homelander, aka the evil Superman, was an analogy to Trump. I mean, he's a complete narcissist without any morals or empathy, and he values only loyalty. Every season we've just pushed it a little bit further, but it's all over. I mean, it's all over uh, season one. Much like his real life counterpart, his fans see him as their savior because they want to make America super again. And even in real life, there are people who think he is the hero. So much so that showrunners had to clearly state that Homelander is the villain. And of course, he's a wildly entertaining maniac and Anthony Starr's portrayal is perfect. Everything down to the last minute details. But still, I don't know how you root for Homelander. He's not even particularly macho, he's, he's weird. I don't know how you look at that guy and you're like, that's my guy. But as I said, now fiction and reality have gotten uncomfortably close. At the end of the fourth season, Homelander makes it to the top of US politics, thanks to an orgy of lies, misinformation, and a super intelligent superhero who plan everything behind the scenes. In real life, there is no super intelligent superhero, but there is Project 2025, and it sounds just as made up. 900 pages outline how a conservative government can save our children, reclaim our culture, revive economy, and defeat the anti-American left at home and abroad. At least that's what it says on page two. And yes, I did my best to read the damn thing. And it wasn't easy. It's not only a lot, but also full of political terms I didn't always get and had to Google. And there are even some arguments that sound kind of reasonable. Like, of course, I don't want children to come into contact with pornography, and I don't want social media to prey on them. But then there are also things like Sesame Street apparently being based on the left, and allegations about Planned Parenthood um, profiting from the sale of organs from aborted babies. <laughs> Look, I'm by no means an expert, so feel free to read it yourself. And no, Project 2025 did not come from Trump himself. And after the public became increasingly aware of it, he is very much trying to distance himself from it. Is it me? Am I the drama? I don't think I'm the drama. Maybe I am. Am I the villain? But it was made for him or any other future Republican president. And over 100 of his former advisors have joined forces with almost as many conservative organizations for this. And the result is um, something. A few examples. The Department of Justice should be placed directly under the president's control. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration should be dismantled because it is one of the main drivers of climate change alarm industry. And um other things. Officials in federal agencies should be replaced with employees with policy-supportive 
character. Like, for example, with the Department of Health, which then could reverse approvals for medications like chemical abortion drugs, effectively banning abortions nationwide without any involvement of Congress. By the way, abortions are mentioned quite a lot. For example, funding for abortion clinics should be cut, and if abortions really are medically necessary, it should be mandatory for all states to report them in detail. <laughs> children. The Department of Education should be eliminated because it apparently supports a cultural revolution in which students are groomed for wokeness. And the Department of Labor should amend its hazard order regulations to permit teenage workers access to work in more dangerous jobs. In other words, child labor should be made legal. All of this is intended to expand Trump's power as president as much as possible from day one. He would have the final say on pretty much everything. Or as Homelander said, Why would we care? Because I have to get reelected in four years. Article two of the Constitution. New world, new rules. You gotta get out and vote. In four years, you don't have to vote again. We'll have it fixed so good, you're not gonna have to vote. Wait, you're serious? You have to vote on November 5th. After that, you don't have to worry about voting anymore. I don't care because we're gonna fix it. The country will be fixed. That doesn't sound good, Ashley. Oh yeah, no shit, Ashley. Sorry, Ashley. Yet many still believe it can't be that bad or that it's just a lie from the left anyway. And yes, it sounds like a wild conspiracy theory. But then again, no one could have imagined that the US Supreme Court would grant a president immunity. Besides The Boys, another TV show comes to mind that he's deserving and close to home, or a potential future. In Handmaid's Tale, changes also came gradually, and nobody thought it could be as bad, until it was. Look, you might wonder why I even care about all of this. I mean, I live in Switzerland. But did you know that not only can US politics have consequences for many other parts of the world, but also that the US and Switzerland have a historical political past. For centuries, they called each other sister republics and shaped and influenced each other's governments and constitutions. Even today, there are kind of similar, even though in Switzerland we don't have one president, but seven. Not like that. And sometimes we weren't as progressive as the US. Like, did you know that it took until 1990 for all Swiss women to gain the right to vote? Because some parts of the country just refused until they were forced. Or that abortions are only officially legal nationwide since 2002. And after Roe v. Wade was overturned, there were people who said, if it worked over there, why not here? How about now? So I'd very much prefer it if we weren't influenced by some of these current ideas. I mean, I don't know if it really comes to all of this. I certainly hope not. But at the end of the first season of The Boys, after the soups had won, one of them said, Buckle up for phase two. And I wonder what the world will look like in two years when the final season will be released.